Hi, everybody. Uh, every wing to Petra Kucha. All right. Uh, so multimodal transportation has been the holy grail uh, of urban mobility for decades. And now we're about to make it a reality with a massive adoption of micromobility. But as most of you probably know, in order to become a permanent staple, this industry needs to grapple with its core challenges, unit economics and safety. Why is that an issue? Because when we own a private vehicle, we ensure it's safe to ride, we maintain it, we charge it. But when you operate under a fleet, you need to absorb all these costs, perform all these operations for all your vehicles. And the costs just don't add up, unless technology dramatically changes. Now, we need smart vehicle fleets that can have autonomous maintenance capabilities to replace what humans do today to their vehicles. Even better, they need to be able to do things that humans can't do, like predicting when things are about to break and preventing them from breaking as much as possible. Now, how do you do all this uh, when your budget for the entire control system in a shared scooter, say, is under $150? You can't just add sensors uh, uh, and add complexity. You'll basically lose reliability because of the extra complexity, and you'll blow your budget. So the key to doing this is to have access to low-level low level hardware on the vehicle. When you're able to do this, you can run thermal, mechanical, and electrical models in real time that give you information about what is changing in the vehicle, what might break, and can also take actions to protect it. We call the system vehicle intelligence. We developed it over six and a half years of R&D at Super Pedestrian. It's got dozens of patents granted, and at the moment, um, we're deploying this in a new fleet of scooters, which is what we're here to discuss today. That's a scooter. You can try it in the back. Our vehicle intelligence system can power any vehicle under 3 kilowatt power. We successfully deployed uh, in our consumer product, the Copenhagen Wheel. And at the moment, a, you can, uh, you can um, either buy the entire vehicle or work with us on embedding our system on your vehicles. We develop apps because we control the entire operating system for a vehicle. These apps can be geofencing, uh, they can be component monitoring, they can be uh, predictive maintenance issues. All in all, these app developments allow us to continue to involve the product to address the various operator needs in different geographies. Now, here's a bit about how it works. The vehicle monitors hundreds of things, from bus voltages to uh, sensor calibration levels, a, a temperature on battery cells, all in real time, hundreds of things, the most common things that could break. As you ride, these operations continuously take place, and the vehicle is looking for abnormality. It's observing how things started and how they might change through a ride. And through this kind of inference, we avoid the need to use a lot of sensors and are able to detect if things are about to break, or if all systems are in check. If everything's in check, no problem. The system remains available for rental. I think the slide is stuck. Um, but if, uh, if there's an issue, then the system is able to open its own service ticket if it couldn't pretend, protect itself. Could it be that the slide is stuck? Good for me in a Pecha Kucha, it's like a dream. So I'll keep talking until this comes back to life. So the self-monitoring system it has two ends to it. Number one is the detection. And really, we're not looking to do anything cute. Just the things that could risk a rider, could break the vehicle, and basically increase operator costs. Right? The purpose of the system is one thing. Minimize the cost to operators, right, which we know is the key issue, and provide the highest standards of safety. Now, I'll just keep going till the end. Uh, if a vehicle could not protect itself, it applies self-protection within a very, very short time horizon. It needs to operate within about nine nanoseconds. That's the time you have allocated in order to prevent things like fires or um, applying an erroneous command to the vehicle that could put the rider at risk. Nine nanoseconds. Now, if the vehicle couldn't protect itself, detected an issue, but said, well, I couldn't do anything about it, it opens its own service ticket. 
right? You don't need to diagnose or spend a lot of time. Tells the operator what needs to be fixed, scan the vehicle, confirms that you have access to perform maintenance, bring the vehicle back to service very quickly. Again, minimize the cost, maximize the safety. Now, this is an example of a vehicle that needs a new motor drive, right? Automatically detects it, informs the operator, operator performs the replacement, all design is modular, self-check, everything's good, vehicle back to running. And again, I get the grace, which is wonderful. So, if, um, do you want to just click it? Give me the clicker then. <laughs> so, on top of this, uh, we also offer uh, a predictive maintenance system. So, the operating system on the vehicle communicates with a sister operating system on the cloud, right? It's part of the same thing. On the vehicle system, sense, analyze, and respond very, very quickly. On the cloud, we record all the events that the vehicle reported over time and learn how things change. Then, if it sees that something needs maintenance in the near future, again, it opens its own service ticket. Mapping. So, we know, especially here in Germany, geofencing is crucial. Because we control the OS, our maps are on the vehicle. So, you can apply a whole bunch of rules, power limit, speed limit, etc., and the vehicle applies them within under one second or seven meters in full speed. Very, very fast. Click. So, actually, if you come to try our vehicles up on the test track, you can take it out and experience the geofence and see for yourself how, how fast it works. We put one in an unknown place outside. Now, a minute about safety. Uh, safety and reliability go hand in hand, right? If your vehicle is able uh, to monitor itself and take itself autonomously offline between rides, it ensures that no rider uh, will be able to rent a vehicle that would put it at risk. At least it minimizes the chance, right? Now, during a ride, we observe hundreds of events. This is an actual trip report. You can see with all these events where we monitor deep things in the OS and ask, well, is it continuously safe to ride? Should we slow down and stop? Do we just need to open uh, a service ticket into the future? Again, all uh, with safety in mind. Now, all this probably uh, looks a little bit complicated. Well, remember that almost everything I showed here is completely invisible. Right? Our uh, operator customers receive a vehicle that just works. Right? It, it provides up to 3,500 rides, has the industry's most efficient uh, powertrain today, so minimum charging, lowest cost to maintain, and highest safety levels. I'll stop here. Come to see live demos. Uh, we have a booth in the back, test track. You can see the autonomous uh, maintenance system in action. Thanks, Horace, and the micromobility team for having me, and thanks to all of you.